Hey guys, my name is Francisco Hernandez and today I'm doing another episode in my Building the Shot series, which is just a series that I created to go over one shot that I've taken in the past and explain as much as I can about how that shot was created. In today's video, I'm gonna go over how I took this shot on the screen of Miliani that I took at a photo shoot that my friend Adrian invited me to at this very beautiful location called Sal del Rey. Excuse my butchered Spanish, but I think that means the king salt. Correct me in the comments section below if I said that wrong or if I, you know, translated that wrong. Okay, so the very first thing that I want to go over in this video is the gear because I had specific reasons for using the gear that I, that I used and I have specific reasons for why I use them in certain ways. Before I continue, I do want to let you know that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for curious and creative people alike. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity with Skillshare. Skillshare offers creative classes designed for real life and all the circumstances that come with it. These lessons can help you stay inspired, express yourself, and introduce you to a community of millions. I think it's safe to assume that all of you guys watching this video are photographers, and if you guys are interested in learning more about photography, there's so many different classes on Skillshare that you guys can check out. There's classes to learn off-camera flash, your manual settings, and so much more. So definitely be sure to check out Skillshare. One class that I was looking into recently is called Documentary Photography, Capturing Places and People by Amy Vitali. It was very interesting to see how her mind works and how she decides what to capture around her. If you guys didn't know, I actually started photography documenting my own family. So it was very interesting to get reminded of how fleeting the moments can be with documentary photography. Skillshare was made specifically for learning, so there's no ads and they're always launching new premium classes too, so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. If you're curious about the price, it's not that expensive at all, less than $10 a month for an annual subscription. And if you guys are really interested in checking out Skillshare, feel free to use my link in the description area below because the first thousand people to use that link will get two months free of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. The first thing I wanna go over is the camera and the lens. I use the Sony a7R 3 because another piece of equipment that I'm gonna talk about in a quick second was designed specifically for the R3 so it's not compatible with the R4. And the reason why I use the Sigma R35 f1.2 is because I've rented it and I wanted to use it as much as possible. And I've been really absolutely loving this lens. It's the first lens that I use with f1.2 aperture. And I've been, again, I've been really, really loving that. Another reason why I use the Sigma R35 f1.2 is because again, the location was very beautiful and I wanted to grab that scene with a lens that was gonna be able to do that. So that was gonna be the 35 millimeter focal length. That's the widest I think I would ever go for portraits. Maybe in the future that will change. But again, I use the 35 millimeter over something like the Sigma Art 105 1.4 that I also own because I didn't want to just blur that background. I, really, I wanted to show the background in the shot. This next piece of equipment is something that's very important and something that I've been using a lot lately to the point where I wanna make a video specifically talking about this piece of equipment. And that piece of equipment is the STC Optics six stop ND filter designed specifically for the Sony a7R III. This ND filter is really important because it allowed me to stay out of high speed sync and really utilize all the power that my light has because if you didn't know, using high speed sync doesn't actually use all the power that's available in your strobe. Using high speed sync actually cuts it down to as much as half power. Even though I will say full power on your light, using high speed sync is gonna actually be around half power and using this ND filter darken the ambient for me instead of using a high shutter speed, which would do the exact same thing. So I was able to stay out of high speed sync and use all of the lights potential that it has. All right, so here's the Sony a 3 the filter. And let me just show you guys how quick you can install it. It's not that hard at all. You just put it in place and then push a little bit on the top right or the top of the filter and then it just presses it into place and you're good after that. The ND filter comes in a nice little padded case, which I believe is actually an old Game Boy cartridge case. So I thought that was pretty cool. Again, I do want to make a video dedicated to this filter. So in case you guys are wondering why you might need one or why I used one in more detail, then be sure to look out for the video on that because it's coming soon. The light that I use is the Godox 8300 Pro. This strobe right here, I've been absolutely loving it a lot lately because it's small and portable, yet still pretty strong. I've been using it, I think of all the photo shoots I've done in the past couple months. And I, again, I highly recommend it. It's small and powerful and that's helpful, especially if you are somebody that needs to travel a lot. In case you guys are wondering about the size, I do have it right here next to the Godox 8200. In case that's something that you own, you guys can see that it's actually, the 300 is actually shorter than the 200 with the bare bulb head. And the reason why I have the bare bulb on there is because 
That's how I use the 200 because it fills in modifiers nicer. It's nice and softer compared to something like the Fresnel head, the Speedlight shaped head. When it comes to the transmitter that I use, I use the Godox X Pro S, this transmitter right here. You can see that it's not the version two, but it's just because I have the version one and the version two is actually, it looks a little complicated. So that's why I wanted the simplicity of the version one. The modifier used for the Godox A300 Pro was the 35 inch Glow Grand Parabox Pro. It's quite a mouthful, but basically it's a 35 inch parabolic modifier that was made to handle uh, very pro conditions, very tough conditions. It lasts long, it's built very tough, and it can take a lot of power such as 1200 watts of, of power on a strobe, or I think maybe even 2400 watts. It is actually a little bit pricey at $490, but if you are somebody that is really looking to get all the features that it offers and that it was made for, then you would definitely want to spend your money on this modifier rather than the cheaper alternatives that I've used in the past, like the 34 inch beauty dish. I've been getting messages about how big and heavy it is, and it's honestly not that big and heavy. I've avoided parabolic modifiers in the past because I felt they're too front heavy and they would be, you know, unbalanced a little bit, but using the parabolic modifier over something like the 34 inch beauty dish, which is more shallow, really utilizes all of the power of the light that you're going to be using because it's more direct. So it is going to be soft light if you double diffuse like I do, but you are going to definitely notice a little bit more contrast with your lighting. So I've been really liking this parabolic modifier with the 300 because it uses the light very well for the 300 Pro. Okay, so I believe that was everything about the gear, but if you guys have any questions about the gear that I use, let me know in the comment section below and I'll reply as soon as possible. All right, so now let's go ahead and actually get into Lightroom and show you guys the images and explain how I came to that image that I took of Miliani and everything that was going through my mind. So here's the very first shot that I ended up taking and I have the light off on purpose because I wanted to take a shot with the light off and on so you can see exactly what the light is going to be doing. But I wanted to point out the thing that she's sitting on, the tree, because this is something that I intentionally brought to where we were at specifically because I couldn't really think of a standing pose and I thought of some sitting poses. So we needed something to sit on, some, some little bit of a prop to connect her to the scene and also something that wasn't going to get her sitting and be dirty and directly on that salt uh, floor. So that tree that we ended up bringing ended up being perfect for that. With this location, it is supposed to be just salty and dry, kind of like a desert, but it did rain a couple of days before, like maybe two days in a row. So that's why it kind of gets the vibe of a, a lake or a beach because of the water behind her. So we were kind of just near that water because we wanted it to be right there nice and shiny behind her. Cause it, again, it looks like a lake or a beach. I think with this next shot, what I did was just kind of just change the position of where she was at in the framing just slightly, a little bit more to the top right and have the sun directly behind her. Because in this very first shot, you can see that there's a little bit of flaring going on above her head. And I wanted to eliminate that flaring by just getting that sun more behind her head. So in this very next shot, so this is the edited version. Let me show you the, the before. But in this shot, you can see that there's no more flaring behind her because I, I moved her head just slightly by changing my position and getting the sun more behind her head. But I wanted to see if I could get some sort of nice natural light version of this shot and not off camera flash. So I did, you know, mess around with the settings. I didn't get anything perfect by any means, but I got this point and I was thinking it has potential if I wanted to really edit it with natural light. But again, it was going to take a lot, a lot of work. I, with natural light, I take a lot longer editing. So with off camera flash, you get stuff like this straight out of camera. So I'm usually more happy with something like this. With this shot, you can see that she's actually not even at a good horizon. The reason for that, if you guys want a reason, is because I was sitting in that uh, salty ground. It was salty and wet. And I was just kind of just getting a weird position. And I was just, you know, a little bit off axis, but I thought I was in a good axis and then it ended up not working out. Eventually I do turn on the, what's it called? the thing that aligns it so that you know that the horizon is perfect. I have that on there and I use that later on after a couple of shots. So with this very next shot, you can see it is underexposed. The background is exposed better because in the last shot, it's a little bit too bright for my opinion. I thought it was a little bit overexposed. So you can see the settings on this one is ISO 100, F1.2, 1 200th. In this next shot, I increased the shutter just a little bit to 2 50th of a second and then reduced the ISO a stop from 100 to 50 and kept the same aperture of f1.2 and came up with this exposure. But what I didn't do was increase the exposure of the 
you know, of the light itself. So that's why she's a little bit underexposed. There's gonna be two major differences between this shot and the next shot. So I wanna point them out so you guys can see how they, you know, what they are. The first difference is gonna be the exposure. And I know I just said that other shot was a little bit overexposed for my taste, but in this next shot, what I thought would be nice would be to get something more light and airy, you know, basically more ambient. So I do increase the exposure. I also went to a lower angle to just get extra drama from being at a lower angle. So I am also at a low angle at this shot, but I went even lower, like I think towards the ground and I took this next shot. So I'm gonna show you right now. So again, there's more ambient. I'm now at ISO 50, one one hundredth of a second. So I'm no longer at 250th. So I raised it a little bit more than a stop exposure. And I actually really like this result. And you can see again, the, the angle is a little bit lower. You can see because I'm seeing more of the ground here and then less of the ground in this shot here. So that means I was a lower angle. Again, for this shot, I was aiming for more ambient, but then what I decided was, you know, a lot of it is out of focus. A lot of the scene around here, I'm at F1.2, of course. So there's going to be very uh, little in focus, but again, we have a really nice location. So I might want to just grab more of that location in focus. So after I took this shot, I changed my settings from F1.2, 1100 ISO 50 to ISO 50 F2.8 at 1 200th of a second. This is actually raised by, you know, exposure that's raised by two and a half stops. So this is how it looks like straight out of camera. And you can definitely see that the highlights behind her are very much exposed. But again, this is an underexposed shot because my light just didn't have enough power. So uh, one thing that is possible with this shot is to just raise the exposure, which is exactly what I did here. And since the highlights are no longer overexposed, like in this other shot, the previous shot, I can save those highlights if I wanted them really, you know, really exposed correctly. After I took this shot, I was really happy with it. So I changed my position and took a different type of shot. But one thing I wanna focus on real quickly is the settings. I'm at F2.8, 200th of a second, ISO 50. And again, the reason for those settings, even though it's really dark like this, is because I wanted to save those highlights because at a brighter exposure, I was clipping those highlights. You know, that's the reason why I had those settings, which is the same as the next shot, which is, which is the shot right here. Again, it looks this dark, dark, and then I raise it two and a half stops. But after I took this shot, I thought, you know, there, you know, there's not that much interesting things going on in the background. It is a beautiful shot in the background, but you know, we could blur it a little bit and still be able to see it. So I wanted to go ahead and just open up the aperture. So that's exactly what I did. And I got this shot right here. This is straight eye camera, no uh, exposure bump or anything. And I felt like it was a good shot, but those highlights are just too bright. So what I do in this next shot was go at a lower angle, you know, a little bit lower of an angle. I still get those um, highlights overexposed in the top of the, of the frame of the shot, but those ones next to her face are a lot more hidden because I changed the position so that she would be blocking them. This shot is one that I've already edited, but I wanna show you guys how it looks like straight out of camera, which is right here. So this is after I make my adjustments, before, after. After I took that last shot, I was happy with it, so I decided to just you know, take more of a different types of shots. And I wanna say that although the highlights are going on in the shot and there's something that you should focus on and be, you know, worried about clipping, I think I was more focused on her expression and trying to get different types of good expressions. So that's why I'm just giving you guys an excuse for why I wasn't really focusing on hiding those highlights. Uh, you know, the ones that go on on the side of her face and on top of the screen there, top of the shot. But uh, again, I was just trying to get different types of shots and I ended up with these photos here. Uh, this shot here, you can see the catch lights are barely visible. They're barely visible right there. But th this is something that I would probably raise the exposure of just, just the eyes so you can see the eyes a little bit better and those catch lights. I'll be honest with you guys, I took this shot, but I'm not a big fan of it. The reason why I took this shot was because I thought in my head, you know what, maybe I can get, you know, the, the yellows and the oranges and the gold from the sun and then if I frame it just so I can get some of those, you know, less intense bright skies, the blues will show up so I can get the gold and the blue together and it would look nice. But maybe that would have worked out differently if I had tried out, you know, tried this, this shot more. But I took this shot, I did get what I wanted, you know, golds on the left, blues on the right, but it wasn't exactly what I was aiming for. So I just changed up the position and ended up taking 
uh, portrait orientation shots now. This is the first portrait orientation shot. I do have footage of me taking these shots, so I'll go ahead and throw that on the screen right now while I'm talking. But again, the main thing I wanna emphasize is just the fact that I was trying to get a variety of shots because this location, although very beautiful, I felt very limited in what I could create with it and the type of shots that I would be able to create, at least to my knowledge. So I was just trying to work with the prop that I had, that log that she's sitting, or that tree that she's sitting on. The specific framing was again, for that reason that I mentioned earlier, getting blue on one side and then gold on the other side. So you can see that's actually going on in this shot as well. After I took this shot, I just went ahead and corrected my horizon, which gets to this point right here. And this shot is uh, edited with my adjustments in Lightroom, but I wanna show you guys straight up camera, of course. So this is the before and this is the after. I did raise it a little bit at you know 0.75 of stop and I did make adjustments like raising the colors and stuff. Uh, I am going to show you guys those adjustments when I get to the photo that I'm going to be talking about or the reason why I made this video to begin with. So here's the next shot which I'm not really a big fan of because the feet show up a little bit too big at this point. I think in the previous shot, actually you know what, they still show up pretty big but I have her face kind of at a better position and the horizon is corrected. You can see that the horizon is messed up again in this shot. And then for the next shot that I take, um, it's a little bit more corrected, but I want, I'm just gonna give you guys the excuse of me sinking into the ground. So just accept that as if it was actually true. So here's the behind the scenes of that shot, but I believe it's actually bigger. I believe I actually cropped it. So you can actually see Ashley right there taking the behind the scenes video of me taking that shot or actually the behind the scenes. So here, there's that right there. I guess at this point I decided to switch back to landscape orientation and the reason why I did so is because I wanted to grab extra amount of scenes. So in the previous shots I've already taken, I did get low angles and I did get, you know, angles with water in the background, but I didn't get anything that shows all of the, the you know, what's going on behind her. So that's why I decided to set up this shot here. You can actually see the lights still in the shot. So it kind of works as a, a behind the scenes so you guys can see the lighting but I left it in there because I wanted it to be that close to get the light on her as it is in the shot. If I had it further away, it'd be weaker and wouldn't show much uh, as much on her face. So I left it in the shot and I had intended it ready at that point to remove it in post. So I take a couple of shots. I, I'm actually happy with this one, but I take a couple of shots. And then after I'm happy with the shot, I decide to take the light completely out of the way and what I'm gonna do is use this shot here without the light to bring back this floor without the light so that I can effectively remove the light. So after I took those last shots, a friend of mine who's at the shoot by the name of Tony, he suggested that maybe we can get a rim light going on. And he actually did have the 8600 Pro manual with a strip softbox, which ended up being perfect. The only thing that was a downside was that he brought the light practically dead to the photo shoot. The one thing that I'm gonna criticize myself about these next coming shots is that the light should happen lower so that she could have better catch lights or if I didn't want to lower the light or if I couldn't for, for, for whatever reason, she could have just lifted her chin just slightly to get more of the light filling her eyes and have better catch lights. But I, I was really happy with this uh, framing and the lighting so I just took a couple more shots which ended up being these next ones here. And then I was happy with this shot the most. So that's what, or not the shot, but this shot the most, it's loading slowly, this shot the most. So I was happy with it and ended up editing it. And you can see that the light is in the shot. I actually cropped it for Instagram already because the uncropped shot, you can see a lot more of the light on the side here and the rim light too. You can actually see some toes going on right there. But uh, yeah, you can see that the framing of the shot unedited, uncropped. It had a lot of the light going down. So I already knew that I was gonna to share to Instagram mainly. So I decided to just go to eight by five crop or four by five crop so that I could eliminate the lights going on in the shot. And then in post and Photoshop, you know, then I could remove the rest. I do wanna briefly go over the adjustments made and then show you guys some of the other shots that I took at this photo shoot before showing you the full edit in Photoshop to this photo. So the adjustment that I made was I raised the exposure half a stop to you know, 0.5 right there. I did adjust the temperature from 50, 50, 5050 with a tint of 10. I made it warmer to 5400 with a tint of 15. And I also changed the saturation. I raised the saturation of the yellows and reduced the oranges. The reason why I had to reduce those oranges because 
I raise all of these the uh, saturation of the shot to 80 from this blue primary saturation slider in the calibration section and I also uh, reduced the vignetting just a little bit so this is fully corrected but I wanted some vignetting because I feel like it gives more attention to the center of the image where the person is at so I just reduced it just a little bit the distortion I did reduce all the way so this is without the distortion corrected and then here's it with it corrected and then I didn't do anything to the hue. Oh, actually I did do, I reduced the hue to negative 20 on the yellow slider. One thing I always do in Lightroom is if I feel like there's certain areas, specific parts of the photo that could be adjusted in different ways in terms of exposure or temperature or anything else, I'll go ahead and use the adjustment brush tool in, Photoshop, or in Lightroom. And that's exactly what I did to the eyes. So I felt like the eyes could be brighter. So I did that, let's see, with the effect off. And then I also raised the area around her eyes from here to here, just slightly at 0.25 of a stop. And that's everything that I did in, uh, to this shot in Lightroom. Here's the behind the scenes of that shot. There's Tony on the left, there's Ashley on the right. There's my Peak Design backpack, the 300 Pro and the Grand Parabox Pro there. So now we have the photo from Lightroom, the Lightroom adjusted uh, edit we have that photo in Photoshop now I'm going to show you guys what I did exactly in Photoshop the very first thing that I did is something that I actually do for formatting the shot to fit Instagram's crop but for this specific photo I had a different reason for that for this shot you can see that there's a little bit of something that was dealing with the modifier going on over here maybe a strap or something and then the leg stand and then this modifier and a little bit of the leg stand as well going on so what I did was just grab as much as I can using the marquee tool, anything that's not this, the subject skin or body. So this is a little bit too far because then you have the toes and that's something that you'd be stretching. So I get as much as I can close to the subject and then I stretch it to the left or stretch it to the right on the other side. So let me just show you exactly what I did. I stretched it just a little bit so that I can get those lights and modifiers out of the way. And then I used the spot, move, spot removal tool, clone sap tool, patch tool, different things to remove any sort of distractions that I felt were going on in the shot. So that's what I did in, in this layer right here. So this is the before and this is the after. Just things that I felt like were distracting. Um, I also did that to the face, but I usually call the layer something like blemish removal. So let me just show you guys that real quickly. So that's just the blemishes. Anything that's temporary, I will remove. Uh, and the next section is probably a big section to, to go over. So I usually do frequency separation to kind of smooth in areas that I feel a little bit rough on the skin or remove wrinkles in clothing. So that's what I did in this shot here. You can see that I just try to even things out or move, different, move shadows sometimes. So this is the before and this is the after. Some feedback that I got from after posting this shot was that I smooth in things too much. I want to say that that's, that's valid feedback because after I edited this shot and I saw it multiple times over and over again, I felt like that was true. I felt like it was a little too over edited. So uh, next time I'll go ahead and just probably add more texture to the shot or actually not smooth as much to leave the texture there. Yeah, I just wanted to go over that because it's, sometimes it's good to know that you know, when you've gone too far. After frequency separation, I did dodge and burn. This is the before, this is the after. So after I did the dodge and burn, then I decided to correct this highlight right here going on, going on behind her neck. This is the before and here's the after. Before and the after. I just basically fixed the highlight just a little bit. Then I used a myriad of different types of selective color layers, um, color balance layers to, to mess around with the colors. So I'm actually happy with how the colors are here, but I guess as I was editing the shot, I felt like it could be more colorful. So. I got to this point right here. I don't think anybody told me this feedback that it was too colorful or something. The colors were pushed too much, but that's the feedback that I would give myself. So I'd probably go ahead and just reduce this to something maybe like, maybe like even 50 and then be happy with how the colors look like there. Yeah, so that's the colors. And then I actually liquefied just a little bit. I slimmed her waist just a little bit, added volume to the hair. The very last thing I did was remove some of these little areas next to her head. I felt like they were just to, you know, grabbing the attention away from her face too much. So um, that was everything. I feel like this video was probably way too long, so I'm gonna go ahead and end it now. But if you guys have any questions at all, let me know in the description area below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.